Hey guys, thanks for coming back and watching another video on the Garden Oasis channel. I want to talk about alliums today. Alliums are a beautiful plant for your garden, and if you can get them at a bargain, that makes them even better. Uh, we, we frequent the big box stores usually at the end of September and October because all of the holiday merchandise is coming in, and they're wanting to liquidate a lot of garden products that it's going to be in their way when they're bringing in the holiday stuff. So today we're going to be talking about planting alliums and every possible aspect of having success in planting those. Once they're established in your garden, they're very resistant to animals eating them. So once they get to growing, you're going to be stunned at how beautiful these plants are. Now throughout the video, I'm going to be sprinkling in pictures of alliums I have, and they really are stunning. If you've ever remember the cartoonist Dr. Seuss, it's almost like he had alliums in his garden because there's some flowers that he's drawn in the books and it's amazing. They look exactly like alliums. So you probably saw them as a child, but if you have a Dr. Seuss book around and you have any kids, go take a look at them and you'll see those flowers. They're in there. So alliums themselves are in the onion family and the shallot family, and they really are a ornamental onion, I guess you could say, but they are quite beautiful. They grow in different heights, but some of them can get up to four feet tall. And the flower heads on them, can some varieties can be quite, quite large. So I would recommend browsing through. Some of the bulbs can be the size of a almost a baseball. Maybe not that quite, but maybe the size of a lemon. But these are a little bit smaller. They're about the size of maybe a ping pong ball. But anyways, I'm really looking forward to see what these do. But I want to plant them in a pot so I can decide once they come up where I want them to go exactly in the garden. They do need sun, so let's get through the entire process of exactly what these are going to need to thrive and be successful in your garden. And you'll be, you really will. I'm not just saying this, you will be stunned at how great these look. So guys, when you're purchasing your allium bulbs, you want to look at them carefully, even if they're inside of a bag and press on the bag through the bag and make sure there's no softness or mold visible. Now you could see a little bit through this bag, but they were all very firm and no, I couldn't see any mold growing. So that's one thing you want to start with a high quality bulb. These bulbs can be as expensive as two or $3 each for the large ones. So you wanna make sure no softness and no signs of mold. So guys, you wanna make sure that you plant these before your first frost hits. You don't wanna wait till after. So just make sure that you check your zone map and make sure you're in an area that can take, the allium can take the frost it's gonna get in the cold weather, the depth of freezing, but they're very hardy. They can go down to negative 10. I believe this particular variety is called purple sensation. So they can take extreme, extreme cold. Now, if you're planting them in open ground, you want to make sure that it's going to have full sun at least six hours a day or more. When you're planting them, you want to make sure you plant them six to eight inches apart because they are going to get really tall and, this, and the flower heads are going to be too close to each other. So just make sure they're about eight inches apart. Your planting depth is going to be about four to six inches and in this pot that's exactly what we're going to do in the open ground if you have really hard ground consider using a drill bit with a nice flat paddle bit or if you have an auger use an auger to get them down to that depth you don't want to plant them more shallow or under six inches because the frost could damage them if you have an extreme frost now these will bloom in spring and early summer so this is a great time like i said to plant now and you'll have something to look forward to next spring and early summer. Now, I didn't give you probably a good enough time frame as to when, when you need to plant them before that first frost is in. So I'm gonna just say four to six weeks, and you can find out your first frost date, frost date, frog date, I don't know, frost date when you go to weather.gov and type in your zip code, and it will tell you your first expected frost date. So you wanna go back about four to six weeks before that date, and that's when you put them in the ground. So guys, I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can see the planting method in this pot. I have enough bulbs here, I think, for two pots. So I'm not going to crowd them in this pot. I'm going to start it in a second pot, but I'm just going to do this one on the video. But here they are. We're going to do these little jewels. I'll bring you right in so you can see how this works. So guys, alliums, you can see the, the root side here, and this is the pointed side. So we're going to fill of it, make sure there's no soft spots, any rot happening because it may have sat in the bag for too long. But like I said, these were at a discount, so we were willing to take a chance on them, even though I tested the bulbs and see, saw if they were feeling soft or anything like that. So anyways, they say plant at least three times depth of their height. So you see the pointed side and the root side is down. The pointed side is one that's going to send out the shoot. So we're going to go about maybe five inches deep. Move on to the next one. Make sure we have root side down. And this is a lot easier than doing it in open ground, but I'm still not 100% sure where these are going to go eventually in the garden. So I'm going to put 
Uh, we've gotten two. I'm probably going to put five in this pot. We're going to stick there in our homemade potting soil. I don't know how that happened. But if you want to see how to make your own potting soil, I've got a video about that. Here's the next one. I'll link that up above. See, I'm going to put that down about five inches. And then I'm going to put the last one right in the center. And these will probably come out of this pot at some point because I think the flower heads are going to be too big. Now, another thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add sh very, very finely shredded pine bark about an inch to inch and a half deep on this. This comes and it'll add a little bit of acidity, acidity to, to the soil as well. So I'm going to just move that around. That'll help retain moisture, protect it from an extreme frost, which they, you know, negative 10 is pretty impressive at their ability according to the bag. So I'm going to put that on there. This particular shredded pine bark is sold at Lowe's under soil conditioner. And so you can find it there. I've never seen it at another American big box store called Home Depot. I've never seen it there. It may be there under a different name, but this has always been at Lowe's for at least 20 years under the name soil conditioner in the potted soil area. Now, if you do decide to plant an open ground, make sure you add some compost to the soil until it in. You're going to want to do maybe a two to three foot wide area, not super deep, but you just want to have a nice two to three foot diameter there so the allium can spread. It does spread underground and new bulbs will form. So just make sure that the soil is really rich. Add some compost and some really high, high quality topsoil. I've got a video about how to make a premium potting soil and you can add that to the compost. Uh, I'll link that video if I haven't already linked it. After you've planted, you want to make sure that you've heavily watered them and especially in open ground. You want the soil to be very wet and then allow it to drain. But that's one thing that's really important to allow those roots to start forming. Now remember, as I said earlier, wherever you choose to put these, if you do put them in open ground, you're going to need a minimum of six to eight hours of sunlight every day. They really like full sun. Now one thing that's really impressive is when you see a group of allium all in clusters, and that's one way I would recommend planting them. Get as many bulbs as you can afford and plant them in a cluster because when they come up, and those flower heads are out there, people will just stop and look. It's amazing. Now, if you are growing onions in your vegetable garden, you want to avoid planting alliums too close to them because if there's an onion pest already around your onion plant, you don't want them to go and attack the allium because it is in the same family. So if there's any diseases or issues, it might be transferred from those to your alliums. And Onions are pretty easy to replace, but these alliums are quite a bit more expensive. Now, if you plant in open ground, the same as I've done in this pot, you want to add mulch, about two inches of mulch to the top to help retain moisture and stabilize the soil temperature. And one way you can check on that is by using a pH meter. This meter will test pH, light, temperature, and just it's a great, great thing. I like it. I just bought it a couple of weeks ago to replace my old meter. And it's been working quite well. I've kind of cross tested it with another meter I have, and it seems to be working great. I'll link that as well. Now, during the growing season, you want to consistently water the allium, especially during dry spells. You just don't want it to dry out. And once the allium has flowered and the flowers have started to fade, go ahead and cut those off, deadhead them, so the plant can start putting its energy into the roots and the bulbs. Now, after about three to four years, you want to consider digging the allium up and dividing it like you would a hosta. And that's the same similarity with hosta. It can be divided and you can just multiply, multiply and have as many alliums, alliums as you want. So that's a great thing to remember. About three or four years after you've planted it, plan on doing that. Put it on your calendar and you'll be happy you did because before long you'll be covered in alliums. Now when you do dig your alliums up, you can also look for offsets the same way you look for an offset on a aloe vera or some other plant like that, but that offset can create another plant as well. So on the main bulb, look for a small bulb growing on it, and then you can break that off and start another allium with that. So during the growing season, you want to apply a little bit of neem oil from time to time because aphids can be a problem on the alliums and also the onion fly. Now on some of the alliums, you may have to consider staking them to keep them from falling over because those flower heads on some varieties can get huge. And so if they fall over, that's really disappointing that you waited all season. You started to see flowering and it got so heavy it fell over after a heavy rain. So make sure you do that. Do some staking just as a preventative and that will keep your alliums looking great. Now in the springtime, 
you want to apply a balanced fertilizer, slow release balanced fertilizer. And I always recommend Osmocote slow release because I use it quite a bit on bonsai and many other plants in the garden. Now, as far as using a liquid fertilizer, I almost always recommend when you want root growth is Bloom Plus. It's 10 54 10. So it's not a high nitrogen fertilizer. That 54 is the phosphorus. And that is what encourages root growth and also flowering. So this is the perfect thing if you want your allium to look great and to multiply as fast as possible. Now, if you're planning on leaving your alliums in containers long term, you're going to want to refresh that soil every few years as it the soil becomes older, it's just a good idea to do that. In addition to that, when you're redoing the, the old soil, you can take those allium bulbs and split them and start new pots so you can have quite a variety. This pot will quickly become too small. So if you're gonna do it in a pot long term, use a much larger pot. Or if you have a lot of bulbs, you're definitely gonna want more surface area on the top, maybe double or triple the size of this pot. So there's a lot of different varieties of alliums. There's even alliums that are white and Depending on your zone, you're going to want to consider selecting one for your climate, your coldest times of the year, and your hottest times of the year. So in the description below, if you'll take a look down there, I'll put these different zones and which alliums grow best in that zone. So guys, I hope you'll consider growing alliums. They're really a beautiful plant. And most of the time when someone's visiting your home, when they see the allium, the first thing they're going to do is point at it and say, what is that? So guys, I've got a lot of alliums to plant here in another pot, and I've got to get these watered and taken care of. I just want to say thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you would, like and subscribe if you found something helpful. And also, if you'll leave me a comment. If you found something I said to be an error, please let me know below, because I also read critical comments, and I take them to, to heart, and I want to learn. So that's my main motivation in gardening is learning. I've been gardening for 25 years on this piece of property and I'm still learning. I don't really know if anyone truly ever masters gardening. Have a great day, guys. Green eggs and ham.